How far is too far? That's a question we've been asking since a Facebook post about a road rage incident escalated last week. A piece of video of the run in on Highway 55 was posted by the family of the couple that says they were attacked. They say they were simply looking for help finding the identity of the alleged attackers. From there, the Internet took over and the accused were quickly discovered online, which led to posting of personal information and then outright personal threats. We wanted to hear from all involved in this incident, but not everyone agreed to participate. But that didn't stop us from wondering how far is too far. KTVB's Joe Paris sat down with the couple that says that they were attacked physically to hear their side of what they say certainly did go too far. It felt just like they were trying to hit our car off the side, um, like onto the shoulder. Because every time we'd swerve, they'd swerve into us. It was supposed to be a simple drive to McCall. During the ride up Highway 55, Brooke and Tate Jones say that they noticed a small black car tailgating them at Beacon Light Road. And quickly, the couple says that the driver behind them got aggressive. Brooke felt so uneasy that she called her mom to talk it through. Hey, we're just about to pass Abelmore. A car's been tailgating us, so I'm a little bit worried. And then so my mom heard the whole thing on the phone and uh, she was pretty scared <laughs> just by hearing me. Brooke says the situation continued to escalate as they felt the black car was trying to run them off the road. Tate says as he drove into Boise County, the situation boiled over. There's a turnoff that goes into the rodeo area that's right there. Um, they darted out on the side and before they even cleared our car, they swerved in front of us, so I had to just slam on my brakes and swerve over. Brooke and Tate say that the family in the black car pulled up and started yelling profanities at them. The man had gotten out of the car and started screaming more profanities and just started punching through the window. When he was punching through the window, did he hit you? Yeah. How many so, times do you think? So I remember three times. She remembers him hitting me about eight, eight to ten. Eight to ten times. So after he punched me the first time, I blacked out. So they, the man went and hopped back into the car, and they were all still yelling at us, and we grabbed the video camera out. Really? Tate took this video as the black car drove off. The couple says that they wanted to identify the other family involved and to see if anyone had witnessed the incident. So they posted everything on social media. So the Facebook post. Yes. The question's been asked, who posted the original Facebook post? My mom. Who heard the whole thing? Yes, my yeah. mom was on the phone the whole time. That Facebook post was quickly shared thousands of times. Short time later, people online had identified the family, even sending Tate and Brooke a photo. Our hearts started racing. Yeah. He couldn't even look at it. A lot of false information is being published and shared and spread which in turn is inciting death threats. Dozens of Facebook users claim that this was the family seen in the black car. This YouTube video published by the Antler Trader, it tells a very different story of what happened on Highway 55. On our way to McCall, somebody decided to make some decisions and which uh, escalated to us being run off the road. Tell the world the wrong story, then that, it's just, it's crazy to me. The Antler Trader family tells a different side of the story and made it clear. This incident has been hard on them as well, but for a much different reason. People that are reading the story, hitting share, you are all part of the problem. You are creating hate crimes against people you do not know, against a subject you do not know about. Do you think people went too far in posting pictures and addresses and phone numbers? I, yeah. feel, I feel like some people did. Yeah, some go. people did go too far. She couldn't go to school today because she has girls at her school whose names are being handed over to the police, posting her name, address, phone number, her school schedule. Brooke and Tate say that this was never their intention, that they were simply hoping that someone driving 55 saw something that day, something that will help investigators sort it all out. The Boise County prosecutor weighed in and sent us a statement. This incident that occurred in Boise County on February 1st is currently being reviewed by the Boise County Prosecutor's Office for potential criminal charges. If there are any witnesses, I would encourage them to contact the Boise County Sheriff's Office.